Okay, a major skill we'll need to do uh, in this chapter 4 and in uh, later math classes is to solve for y in terms of x. And you'll need all the skills you've learned so far. Now, in this section, in this video, I'm going to do exercise 58, for example, and then exercise 60. And once I show you, once we can know how to do these, then you can do the rest in the homework. They're all similar. Okay. So let's just, and we'll start off with something just like the first couple of problems. If we had x times y equals negative 3, and we need to solve for y, we need to get y by itself. y has been multiplied by x, so to undo multiplying by x, divide by x on both sides, right? And what we get is these x's cross cancel, and you have y equals negative 3 over x, okay? which of course can also be written um, negative in line with the fraction bar 3 over x. Okay, So solve this one, x times y equals 1. x times y equals 1. y has been multiplied by x, so to undo that, divide both sides by x, and you would get y equals 1 over x. Okay, Now, this one, y plus 2x equals 3. What we want to do is solve for y in terms of x. We want to get y on its own. Get y alone. What's been done to it? 2x is being added. How do we undo adding 2x? Subtract 2x. Okay, so subtract 2x. Because 2x minus 2x makes 0, doesn't it? Now, if you subtract 2x from the left, you must subtract 2x from the right-hand side. So this makes 0, and we're left with y equals 3 minus 2x. And there's another skill which we might as well practice now because we need it. Um, if we took, for example, 10 minus 2, okay, is what? Write down the answer. It's 8. What is negative 2 plus 10 equal to? Negative 2 plus 10 is also 8, isn't it? 2 negatives and 10 positives. Now, the reason that these are the same is because, look, this is just a negative 2, negative 2, see that? Negative 2, positive 10, positive 10. The negative is in front of the 2, and the 10 is positive. Same thing, okay? Or you could remember that subtraction is the same as adding the opposite. So this is 10 plus negative 2, or negative 2 plus 10. Negative 2 plus 10, okay? So if I want to rewrite this with the x term in front, I need to do this. Um, oh, by the way, by the way, why can't we do this? 3 minus 2x makes 1x. Why isn't that 1x? 3 minus 2x? These are not like terms. Remember that? These are not like terms. We, we have not like terms, so we cannot put those together. Okay? So it can't be 1x. Now, um, change the subtraction to plus negative, and what you have on the left is negative 2, on the right-hand side, is negative 2x plus 3, plus 3. Negative 2x plus 3. So y equals negative 2x plus 3, okay? Now, let's have a look at this one. y minus 8x equals negative 5. See if you can solve that. What's been done to y? 8x is being subtracted. Get y by itself. Add 8x to both sides. Okay? And negative 8x plus 8x is 0, so we've got y equals negative 5 plus 8x. Right? Now, what I want you to do is write that a different way. Negative 5 plus 8 By the way, negative 5 plus 8x. Oh, hold on a second. Negative 5 and 8 is 3. Is that 3x? Why isn't that 3x, or why isn't it just 3? Because these are not like terms. Remember that? They are not like terms. This is a number, this is an x term, so we cannot do that, okay? Now, this can also be written positive 8x plus negative 5, or minus 5, can't it? And we usually like to have it written like this with the x term on the left. So we need to learn to write it this way and this way, both ways. So, solving this one, go ahead and press pause and do it yourself. Press pause and solve this one. You would, x is being added to y, we're solving for y, so subtract x from both sides. 
and on the left we have y, on the right we have negative 1 minus x, which can also be written with the negative x in front, negative x minus 1, right? And again, look, negative x, negative 1, same thing, okay? Okay, what's interesting is when the y has been multiplied by something, okay? So if we have 3y equals 12x minus 6, how do you get y by itself? You need to divide by 3. Now if I divide this side by 3, I divide all this side by 3. Agreed? So 3 over 3 is 1. We're left with y here. Do in blue. y equals. And now this is 12x minus 6 all over 3. Hmm. That's the same thing as... Watch this, 12x over 3 minus 6 over 3. So this is the same as y equals, now 12x over 3 is 4x, isn't it? 12 over 3 is 4. 6 over 3 is 2. So if y equals 4x minus 2, why can we go from here to here? This is all of this divided by 3. Changes to this. Well, um, a quick explanation for dividing everything by the same number with an equation is this. If you had 3a equals 6c plus 3, imagine that that same. Three apples are the same value as six cherries plus three dollars. Okay. Now if I divide this side by three, and if I divide everything by 3, let's see what happens. Divide everything by 3, you'll get 1 apple, 1 apple equals 6 cherries over 3, that's 2 cherries plus 1. Now it says 1 apple has the same value as 2 cherries plus $1. Does that make sense? Well, it does because the first equation said 3 apples is the same as 6 cherries and $3, so therefore 1 apple must be the same as 2 cherries and 1, right? So that's how that works. Um, we could give you more examples, but you can divide everything by the same number in an equation. So if we have 2y equals 3x minus 8, to get y by itself, we divide by 2. And you can divide each individual term by 2. So 2y over 2 is 1y, to, and that's uh, 3x over 2 minus 4, okay? 3 times x over 2 minus 4. Now, the way we like to write that is 3 over 2 times x. I can't remember if we've gone over this uh, yet or not, but 3x over 2 is the same thing as 3 times x over 2 times 1, isn't it? 3 times x is 3x, 2 times 1 is 2. Now this is the same thing as if you broke those fractions up and just put that fraction on its own and left that one on its own. That's the same as 3 over 2 times x over 1. Or 3 over 2, what's x over 1? What's 5 over 1? 5 over 1 is 5. Uh, 7 over 1 is 7. x over 1, x. So 3x over 2 is the same as 3 over 2 times x. You see that? Okay, uh, and you know, so, so what we should get is y equals 3 over 2 times x minus 4, okay? Now let's have a look at this example. 4y plus x equals 2. We're solving for y. y has been multiplied by 4, then x has been added. The first thing done to y, multiply by 4, then add x. Get rid of the last operation first. Undo the last operation first. So subtract x first, and you'll get 4y equals 2 minus x. Or the way we like to do it, 4y is negative x plus 2, right? Well, let's leave it like that for now. Now y has been multiplied by 4. To get it by itself, divide by 4. And if we divide that, we need to divide everything by 4, okay? So what we have is 1y equals... 2 over 4, can you put that in lowest terms? 2 to 2 goes once, 2 to 4 goes twice. So y equals 1 half. 
and then minus x over 4. Now x over 4, well I'll just write that, minus x over 4, right? Now we're going to write this a different way. We're going to write y equals 1 half minus, and let's take the x over 4. Just like the last example, x over 4 is the same thing as 1 times x over 1 times, or rather, sorry, x over 4 is, um, yeah, you could write it 1 times x over 4 times 1, okay, which is in fact 1 quarter times x over 1, or 1 quarter times x, right? In other words, 20 divided by 4 is the same as 1 quarter of 20, right? Because 20 over 4 is 5, a quarter of 20 is 5. So x over 4 is the same as 1 quarter times x, okay? And that's how we like to write it. So it's minus a quarter times x. And then to finish off completely, we like to write it this way. Put the x term on the left, negative a quarter x plus 1 half. Okay, so in the back of your book, you'll see this answer, and this is the standard form of a linear equation. It has the x term on the left. It's actually called a slope-intercept form, and we'll see that later. Let's have a look at this one. 7x minus y equals 5. Get y by itself. Let's do the common error. The common error thing that people often do is, okay, they subtract 7x from both sides, and then they say, okay, y equals 5 minus 7x. Now that's wrong. Can you see why that's wrong? What about the negative sign? We forgot it, didn't we? Don't forget your negative sign. Most important thing. Okay? So, um, subtract 7x from both sides. And we're left with negative y equals 5 minus 7x, or to be smarter, negative 7x plus 5 to keep the x term on the left. Now, negative y is the same as negative 1y. So to get y by itself, divide by negative 1. And you know what? Divide everything by negative 1. And you have positive y equals negative over negative, positive 7x, positive over negative, minus 5. And that's the final answer. So go ahead and try question 58. 3x minus y equals 10. We could subtract 3x from both sides to get negative y equals 10 minus 3x, or even better, negative 3x plus 10, because it's a negative 3x and a positive 10. They're not like terms, so you leave them apart. This is negative 1y, so we divide everything by negative 1 to get y by itself, negative over negative, positive 1 over 1, that's 1y, or y equals negative over negative, positive 3x, positive over negative, minus 10, okay? Um, let's look at another way to solve that for fun, and you've seen a different way before. 3x minus y equals 10, you could have added y to both sides, did you do that? That's good if you did that. And you can get 3x equals 10 plus y. Now get y by itself, what would you do? Subtract 10. So, you know, that might be an easier way, whichever you like. And now that's 3x minus 10 equals y. Okay? So, let's have a look at another example. Um, this one. x minus 3y equals negative 1. Get y by itself. Oops, excuse me. We need to get rid of the x and then get rid of the 3. Well, subtract x from both sides, because this is the same as x plus negative 3y equals negative 1. So y has been multiplied by negative 3, then x is being added on. So to undo adding x, subtract x from both sides, and we still have negative 3y, negative in front of the x, equals negative 1 minus x, even better, negative x minus 1. Uh, get y by itself, divide by negative 3 everywhere. And we have y equals 
negative 1x over negative 3. Negative over negative positive, and that's 1x over 3, you can say. This is negative over negative positive, positive, one third. And it can also be written 1x over 3 is 1 third times x plus 1 third, okay? Um, of course, there's a different way to solve it. We could have done this. x minus 3y equals negative 1. We could have added 3y to both sides at the start, okay? And we would have got x equals uh, 3y minus 1, or negative 1 plus 3y. Anyway, add 1 to both sides next, and you'll get x plus 1 equals 3y. Then divide everything by 3, and you'll get the same answer as before, okay? You'll get your y in its own equals 1 third x plus 1 third, okay? Now, so go ahead and solve question 60, whichever way you like. So you've got to get y by itself. You might remember that this subtraction is the same as plus negative. So you have x plus negative 2y. y has been multiplied by negative 2, then x is being added. So to undo adding x, subtract x from both sides. Uh, left with negative 2y equals negative x minus 5. Uh, divide by negative 2 everywhere to get x by y by itself. And look at this, negative over negative, positive, 2 over 2, 1, 1y, one or y. And this is negative 1x over negative 2. Negative over negative, positive, and that's 1x over 2. Negative over negative, positive, 5 over 2. Can also be written y equals 1 half times x plus 5 over 2. And of course, the other way to do it um, at the start, x minus 2y equals negative 5. You could have, first of all, added 2y to both sides and got um, x equals negative 5 plus 2y. Then you could have added 5 to both sides to get x plus 5 equals 2y and went on from there. Okay? Now, and just to, to remind ourselves one last thing, when you've got x over 2, why is that the same as a half x? Well, if you had 10 over 2, that would be the same as a half times 10, wouldn't it? 10 over 2 is 5. Half times 10 is a half times 10 over 1, which is also 5. 